I'm the Commissar, and we're watching Forged Alliance Forever. Today, we've got 3v3 ladder game on a generated map. I promise you, it's going to be intense. By now, my loyal viewers will know what to expect in a ladder game. We have the cold team, we have the hot team, and because it's 3v3, we know that it's a generated map. Let's meet the cold team first. Up here at the back in the air position for cold team we have Dimitri Eleven. He's seventeen hundred and ninety-six rated. He's Cybron and he's in Mauve. And according to Dimitri himself, he has a low opinion of Team Matchmaker. I disagree with him. I like Team Matchmaker. In front of him in the forward position for cold team we have Saints Row, fifteen hundred and eighty-four rated and UEF. He's in baby blue. And over here, oh, we have Saints Row, who I also disagree with. While TMM is indeed good, I love map gen. Anyway, in the final position for the core team, we have Nyarmarine, who is 18, 1984 rated. He is Cybron, and he is in dark blue. And their mirrors on the hot team are, in the air position, Umbra, who is 1633 rated, and UEF, he's in orange. In the forward position we have Seal Force, 1578 rated, and Eon, and who is sadly mainly going to be fielding tanks and aerial units, and not any seals at all. So that's a bit of a misnomer, but we're going to have to live with it. And in the flank position for Hot Team, this is Mimix, today's highest rated player at 2,124. He is Cybron in Burgundy. Now for the map. So the first thing I notice is that this was generated for four players and there were only three players on each team. So this expansion is going to be worth expanding too fast but it's also the most forward of the various starting positions and so there could be some competition here as for reclaim we have pretty big patches a couple of thousand each here we also have an immense patch hiding behind the flank player and as you see it's all in the form of these big white rocks so lots of reclaim to fight over lots of mass points to fight over or probably going to be quite a fast starting game with this amount of reclaim and this amount of expansion mass. So we have an early bomber out from Mimics, which I like. And he's done the classic thing of build a bomber and then follow it with a scout so that the scout overtakes it to find something to hit. And this could be something delicious to hit. If this bomber can deny Saints his expansion, that'll be brutal. Meanwhile, Seal over here has protected his expansion with a flare which is then going on to raid the bomber drops boom it's quite hard to dodge a uef bomber the zeus because they have pretty good spread fire and also their bombs burn so if you then move through the area you might catch a bit of fire and that is a beautiful denial. Saints only managed to get up one of the mexes before all his engineers were killed and he hasn't got any more coming in. He does however have a drop coming in over here. But the bomber is still in the area and might come back and hit it. It flies by. But it doesn't get a drop and Saints has wisely defended with a mech marine to stop any other engineers coming this way and picking up all of this such as this engineer. But he wasn't ready for that bomber, nor for this jester, which will finish off the last engineer and probably take out the lab before it kills Mimics' engineer. So beautiful air defense from Mimics has denied both this expansion and this reclaim grab from Saints. Over here on this side, Nyarmarine has also dropped and he is setting up an awful lot of production, guarded by point defense, which is a nice touch. But he knows that Mimics is coming in from the air. Will he be able to stop that? And we still have a singular lab on board this air transport. Which he drops before the air transport is shut down. Will he be able to deny this expansion? This mech hasn't been built yet. And if he can kill this engineer first, that would be nice. This reclaiming engineer could also be grabbed 
which would also be nice. The energy does dodge away from the lab, therefore that factory and that mechs are temporarily denied, but the lab has just come over here. And he knows it's there, does um, Sierra Force, so he'll send in one of these tanks, I have no doubt. There we go. What else have we got going on? So, Seal and Saints have both brought their comms across their respective ponds. Saints, I feel, has a tiny bit of an advantage here, in that being Eon, he can make hover spam, and so he's got tanks also coming across the pond, which is an option that is not open to Saints without coming all the way around here, because Saints doesn't have any Tech 1 hover. However, these e Eon tanks, these Aurorae, are going to meet an unpleasant surprise in the form of Nyarmarine's comm, which is coming through this little ravine to support his forward position. Meanwhile, Seer is coming over here to try and take this out with his comm. On the other side, though, we have Mimics and Saints lining up for the face-off. Both are still naked, so two comms all on their own, wrestling without any clothes on, just what we love to see on this um, family friendly channel. Now Seer's getting quite a lot of production head uh, pointing in this direction. He's getting these factories sending spam this way, and this will not be enough to threaten his comm, just a few Mantis is not going to take down a comm. A comm is generally considered a match for about 20 T1 units when unupgraded, and that's not 20 even if you don't take these supporting tanks into account. However, Seal doesn't think he has enough to push in just yet, and he's right because of these point defences. Some engineers grabbing a bit of reclaim here for Seal, but Nya has brought in a bomber to stop them. Meanwhile, Mimics has actually driven Saints Row quite far back. And he's dropped a bunch of tanks and he has yet again denied Saints this expansion. Saints has brought in a bomber, which is great. But Mimics has air support here to take it out. And Mimics has also dropped an engineer of his own. If he can grab this expansion, that would be huge. This engineer could be denied if Mimics brought these tanks back. And immediately he sees it and he does bring them back. Lovely. Over here though, Seal is pushing in with his comm and his tanks. However, that's now got enough point defence with a third one going up that this could be a nasty surprise for Seal's unupgraded comm. And indeed it is, and Seal falls back. Back over here. That Jester has come in from Mimic. Saints has brought his common to do the job himself, and the Jester won't be able to take that out. Ooh, but what do I see over there? I see a sneaky drop. That looks pretty delicious. Mimic's comm, though, is advancing. Is he going to take the fight? No, he's not. He pulls back, so let's go and see what his drop is going to do. Also, Naval Yard there, which could be used to produce the UEF missile cruisers. Five Mantis, they deny the auto gun that's being put down. They're going to be able to take out this turret. Actually, this just can stick around and take out this turret, this mech. And these Mantis can move on. However, Dimitri has brought in a bomber to defend. But that's a lot of inties from Mimics. Will it be enough to deal with the bombers that Dimitri is sending out? Dimitri responds with the Sky Slammer, which is nice. But there are a bunch of Mantis continuing on. And these mexes, they're T2, they could well be denied, and that would set Dimitri's eco back quite significantly. T2 point defense turrets going up in order to shoo off these mantis. I don't think there's enough firepower coming off these mantis to take out the turrets. If Mimics had dropped a couple of pieces of arty, that would have been different. His jester has dealt with this one. But this one survived, and these two are heading on. We'll check back on them in a little bit, because over here, we're seeing an engagement going down between Seal and Nyar, and Seal has got the first 
gun upgrade. The Eon, as you know, have a split of gun upgrades. And Seal has gone for the range, but not yet the speed. Whereas Nya does have the gun upgrade, or the gun upgrade, for Cybran. So he has both range and speed. And this might be enough to force Seal back. And Seal hasn't really got any damage done here. However, Seal's got a decent amount of blazes in there. And I'm not seeing much, if any, T2 out for Nya Marine yet. So maybe that's going to make the difference. And we've got more drops coming in from Mimics against Dimitri. However, that point defense should be more than enough to deny them. This could be nice. He does get a T2 mix down here though, so that's pretty nice. Over here, the other gun upgrade going down for Seal, and Nya hasn't ha had enough to push yet, probably because of those blazes. So we could be in for quite a big fight. Meanwhile, Seal actually has a couple of blazes that have come around here and got into Nyar's base. That is pretty good. There's bombers from Nyar defending, but we saw some good defences from the blazes. Are they going to... Oh, look at that dodge. Nice dodge from Seal, and he's going to claim this mech. Down it goes. He's also got a flak supporter gear which will kill the bomber before it can do too many more passes. There goes the bomber. Both blazes are still alive and he's going to claim another mix. Delicious work from Seal. And in comes Mimix. He's now got both gun and stealth on his common. Dimitri, who's been trying to recapture this long contested expansion, is naked. And this could be a problem for him because Saints, who might otherwise be able to help out and has gun, is stuck to the spot on Nano. On this side, in comes Nya. He's got gun and Saints, Seal rather, sorry, is stuck at the back here getting the other gun upgrade, the range. However, there is more T2 in here for Seal, but it's not going to be enough. And there is T2 still for Nya, who has stealth covering his dudes, so they're not as easy to see. And Seal looks quite badly outnumbered here. Nya might be able to push him back a long way. Dimitri looking quite badly damaged here, and Mimics could be cutting him off. But now, Saints has finished the nano repair, and with his spam, is pushing forward. Could Mimics be in trouble? Well, this might help out. He's got a Loyalist coming in. So Mimics has T3, which he's able to bring in in support. Seal using his advanced range here to his benefit against Nya. Mimics is actually taking quite significant damage, and we have T3 air. We have a Whaler coming in, and this could be the death knell for Mimics. Look at him. He's losing health fast. He's got Saint shooting at him. He's got that Whaler wailing upon him. He's into the red. I don't think he's making it out of here. Boom! Down goes Mimics. And on this side, Seal has held his position and Nya, with not much left, is falling back. Meanwhile, Umbra has sneaked a nice little raid of tanks. They're only T1, but they're still able to do damage into the back of Saints' base. However, Saints is sending his next couple of pillars out to stop them, and Nya bombs it, so that should be easy to clear up. And look at the eco. That's 70 ahead for a hot team, because they've kept this denied so long, and they've just got map control. Amazing eco for hot team. On the left, both Saints and Dimitri, though Dimitri is still naked and advancing, and Umbra does have a brick, but one brick isn't going to be enough, and Saints might be able to take this position and get rid of this T3 production, which would be great. On the right, Nya is having a bit more trouble, and he's falling back. He's got T2 PD, but Seal Force does have the upgraded range, the extra Eon range, onto his gun, and that should be more than enough to stop it. He's also got shields to protect himself, and he's got... T2 spam in support so that's going to be pretty great for him and Nya is falling back. Will Nya be able to hold on to this position? 
I'm getting the feeling that no, he has got a lot of T2 production here, but will it be able to produce fast enough? Over on this side, another bricks come out. Dimitri and Saints are poking away at this. And Saints is taking a bit of damage, but he's got the nano. He needs to overcharge that brick, though, before things get any worse. And Seal over here, he continues to push forward. And look, now he can just range those turrets and those factories easily. However, this brick feels like it might be a little too much for Saints, who's already on half health, as it is Dimitri. So the code team comes to fall in the back here. And on this side, Nya has run all the way back here now seeding this position to seal stuff to catch up on here though tml being fired at saints is based by umbra but this strat from dimitri has taken out the tml and it's moving on what eco damage can this strat do bomb goes down boom two t2 mechs is immediately taken out good asf cover from dimitri will be enough to clear up these from Umbra, another T2 mech, this one fully capped goes down. Slight hesitation from the bomber there. Uh, will there be enough flak here to stop it? ASF's getting on its tail, it drops another bomb. The bomber goes down, but so does another capped T2 mech. Nice play from Dimitri. And Saints has pushed in again. But there are four bricks here, and four bricks might be too much even for a four vet gun nanocom to hold off. Is Saints going to be okay? He's taking damage. He's deep. Ooh, and the fifth rank of vet comes in. I think that's going to save him. This brick is going to be popped, probably. This shield, these shields, need to come and protect Saints' com. However, it looks like there's a gather point problem here because this one bouncer missile AA tank is walking in, presumably to its doom. Quick reclaim from Saints there as the brick walks away. Meanwhile, Dimitri, knowing that he has the air advantage, sends a clutch of whalers down here. And they could get a decent amount of damage done. These unprotected mexes are, well, they're unprotected. There are some, a couple of flaks around here, but that many whalers, if focused, and Dimitri is said to be focusing them, should be enough to clear them up. And there are ASFs coming in from Umbra, but there's a lot of ASFs guarding for Dimitri. And Umbra chooses not to take the fight as Dimitri is going to pop a decent number of T2 mexes. There's T2, there's T3 AAs now coming in to stop them, but he's focusing them and he's going to clear them up. This is nice. Couple of bricks messing up here. Saints will still have to be careful, but with this support from Dimitri, he's probably going to be. And having overrun the position here, look at Seal. His Seal has got armies here with T3 in, armies here, and Nya, who's tried to rebuild his production here with a bit of point defense, might actually be under a little bit of threat. I mean, look at these Cerberus firing out their little tickling shots as they poke gently at these shields. A gentle caress as Seal's army swarms in on Nya. And that's quite a lot with this many Harveys. Nya, who's only got the gun upgrade, might actually be under threat. Arty to do damage to the buildings. This is, this is pretty brutal. Nya is still standing and shooting, but has he stretched a little bit too far? As the Harbies run in after him, well, Nya agrees, and he's brought in a transport to take them out. Will he be able to get out of there? Up he goes, and Nya flies away. Good work from Nya. And those whalers that were doing damage down in the bottom left have come up to defend, and Nya is putting up a big bank of point defense here. 
Will the combination of the Whalers and the point defence be enough? We're about to find out. Whalers are sensibly picking off the flat first. I've been seeing very good air to ground micro from Dimitri. I approve thoroughly. Now Seal has himself come forward. Now he's got the shield on him as well as the, those gun and extra range upgrades. But four Whalers might be a problem for him. And if they focus him, as it looks like they're planning to do, he might actually be in trouble. But what do I see on the minimap? I think we better look at both these things. Because down here on the left, that's an awful lot of bricks towards which Shates is walking. I don't think he knows about them all. And Seal's shield has gone down. His army is coming back, but what's his army got against these whalers? Nothing. I think Seal might be about to go pop, but Saints is now fighting more bricks than he bargained for. Good retreating of these whalers so they don't die in the combom, because the combom goes boom boom for seal a second ejection it's now 3v1 but for how long because look at these bricks descending on saints boom saints also goes out and now it's 2v1 whoa that is going to be quite the game changer here and those whalers have come back to pummel hot team's army down here, these tanks which Nya has inherited from Saints have denied this expansion being taken again and could get some eco damage done, but I think we're about to see an air fight here to try and get rid of these whalers. Who's going to win? Umbra or Dimitri? Previously, Dimitri had air control, but Umbra's obviously been focusing on getting a decent amount of air up, and it looks like he might win it. Look at that! Umbra takes air control from Dimitri and he should be able to go and clean up those whalers with no problem now. And he'll need to because these harpies are expensive. He won't want to lose them. Got a clutch of tanks in the middle but it's been seen off by these bricks. These pillars have continued their little raid, which is nice. And Nya is dropping some tanks. Where are they going? Well, they're joining this army in mid. And how the, well, the equals actually evened up quite significantly because there's been lots of focus on eco from the eco team. And now they're only about 20 apart going and mining those resources out of the ground diggy diggy hole speaking of diggy diggy hole a song with which i'm sure many of you are familiar and covered so brilliantly by windrose any of you guys played deep rock galactic i love that game and windrose have teamed up with deep rock galactic to release an official deep rock galactic mining dwarves single it's called rock and stone you should all go and listen to it it's great to be clear, I am not sponsored by Windrose, but I wish I were. And if you're not all singing Diggy Diggy Hole in your heads, shame on you. There should be a Faf musical. Maybe if I get a thousand su subscribers, I'll do a musical cast. Help me get a thousand subscribers, you get a musical cast. Is that good or bad? Tell me in the comments below. Anyway, what have we actually got going on on the map while I was waffling about that? So these bricks have advanced forward and that army of pillars ha is going to just get past. It's going to take out this batch of reclaim engineers essentially for free. These triads are going to be a bit of a worry. But Nya sensibly knows about those and he's going to come in here and try and hit this eco. Is that enough though to break through the harbies as well? because there's a decent amount of T3 production here. I think that if Umbra had noticed this, he'd have also brought this Harvey back to help out. Whether or not he has, though. And up here, we're seeing a very significant army from Umbra pushing in. Will it be enough? So those pillars have got in here. They're being shot by the Harbies, and... 
They're being shot quite fast. I don't know if there's enough to do any real damage here. Oh, focusing the mechs as though. I like that play. One mech's down. Two T2 mechs is down. That's a pretty good pickup for those pillars. So they're going to die. But they've killed two T2 mechs for Umbra, which is pretty nice. And now it is Cold Team who have the eco lead. Look at that. That is pretty good for Cold Team. And Nya drops a Percy in the back of Umbra's original base, the air production facility at the back. If he can take out a bunch of Mexes or even the air HQ here, that would be fantastic for Nya, and I love it. We'll check on it in a minute though because Umbra is pushing in with his main army here towards Nyar's, well, front line I guess, even though it's up here just right in front of his original base. And while it does so, we've also got a bunch of bricks pushing in here. There are Percy's out to defend from Nyar and that might be enough. We'll have to see. This Percy has taken out Mexes. There's a T3 mex over here that it could focus. It's taken out about three T2 mexes so far. And is looking set to take out a fourth. Will it be able to cap the T2, cap, kill the T2 mex before the swarm of strikers wears through it? And rather than take on this defense, Umbra has choo chosen, chosen to move his army around here where there's an empty opening and he's bringing in more to support. So that could be pretty good. And this Percy is almost dead thanks to point defences going up and it didn't kill any of the T3 mexes, so that's a bit of a pity. I think Nya could have got done a little more damage done if he might put it more, but to be fair he's got a lot of things to concentrate on. Meanwhile, the Percy's and Bricks over here are having a little scuffle, and in this fight, I think my money's on the Percy's with their huge Alpha Strike. And it looks like, indeed, my guess is right, though. There could be slightly better micro here, but again, Nyar's got a whole front line to manage, and these should just defeat the Bricks if they charge in. A lot of bricks coming in in support though, and that will be enough to stop it. And the air situation remains by the looks of things in favour of Umbra. Look at all of these. And that means that he can produce a decent number of gunships, which will be able to stop these Perseys. And Nyar's actually looking quite exposed as Umbra's army pushes in through this passage, which we mentioned wasn't very well defended. This could get a huge amount of damage done. And Nyar's now got Nano and three vets on his comm, but he needs to defend. He's putting up a line of point defences. He's got bricks, he's got his comm, but this is a huge army to stop from Umbra. Nyar does still have the eco advantage, having caught up previously. I say Nyar, Koti, because a lot of that is down to Dimitri. And this could smash Saints' old base. This could do a huge amount of damage. And Dimitri is flying his common here. Is that wise, Dimitri? Is that wise? He does now have gun and stealth, though not nano. And there are these point defenses to help out, but this is a big army from... Umbra. However, Dimitri is boldly firing it and Nyar flies his com in to help as well. Will two comms, including Nyar, who with his gun and nano, be able to deal with this attack? There's a lot of Harveys in there and they're not focusing Dimitri though. I think they could probably kill Dimitri and take it out a lot of this with a com bomb if they tried, but these point defences are going up and I think they're actually going to hold of the attack. I wasn't expecting that. Good play from Nya and Dimitri and very bold work with their comms. But they're not out of trouble yet because that's an awful lot of T2 gunships and Dimitri's going to be forced to take the air fight. 
Dimitri and Nya. And Dimitri is just being focused by the gunships. Nya's running for the water, but the air fight. Umbra's going to win it, and boom! Dimitri goes down, and hit that. I don't think that was a suicide. I think that might have been being taken out by a pigeon explosion. Dimitri goes down, and we're down to 1v1, and Nya has run away to the water, but all the gunships have died in the combo. Whew, that was intense. So, 1v1, Nya versus Umbra. Who's your money on? Tell me in the comments below at this stage. Eco's just a little bit in favour of Nya, but map control and air control, importantly, still in favour of Umbra. And knowing that Nya is in the water, I see torp bombers coming out for Umbra. We do have some Percy's raiding in here, but there's now a shield here and there are gunships and bombers in defence, so I don't know if that's going to get a great deal done. Yeah, Umbra's not going to lose anything important there. That Percy won't be able to take out the Mexes before it dies. How many torps does Umbra think he needs to answer this com in the water? Nya is coming out of the water now, though, so he's going to have to be fast about it. But he, his air was on the ground, and he's going to lose a lot of it for free to this fight from Umbra. And in come the torps. Is Nya going to make it out of the water? Yes, he is. Oh, nice. And when they saw that, they diverted to take out these anti-airs so that this wave of gunships can hit Nya when he's on the land. He does have a couple of bouncers around him. Will there be enough? There's flak. There's bouncers. And there's mobile shields, and that can make the difference, because Nya, with his four vets and his nano, can tank quite a bit of damage. He's not going to get anything done from the air, because look at Umbra's air control. But the gunships are coming in in a slight trickle, more bounces are turning up, the shields are holding, and Nya is going to survive. Not only is he going to survive, Nya is going to be unhurt by that attack. So, delicious work from Nya in his defense and this five mechs expansion is needs to be the next target of his defense because that's a lot of bricks which umbra is bringing in to shoot it up and there are five mechs here one mechs here all of them t2 all of them capped and all of them going to be utterly shredded by a bunch of bricks unless nya can do something about it and as if that weren't enough We've been going for some production from Nya up here with a lot of engineers building it, but Umbra is aware of it and has sent in harbies, and this production hasn't actually started work yet, so I think that with these harbies here and with this extra batch of, that's a lot of harbies coming in, that production will die very quickly, and those mechs, they've just died in a flash. This is a lot of bricks coming in for Umbra, and Nya could be in a bit of a problem, but Nya has been ecoing very hard and he has a hundred eco lead. What can he do with it? Can he turn it into an advantage? Or is this amount of bricks over here, Harvey's over here, that Umbra already has on the field going to be too much for him? Oh, and Umbra doesn't want anything more sneaking through the mid, like that Percy raid in that pillar raid we saw earlier, so he's just putting up a load of T2 point defences there, which is nice. Nya is very sensibly retreating back here, and what's he do doing back here? He's putting up a stealth, and he's putting up a nuke. Will that be the answer he needs? He's got the eco forward, he's got that eco lead, and he's got a lot of T3 engineers here which can assist the nuke. 
So that could be the surprise he needs to regain the fight because he has lost so much map control. Ha! Those T2PDs weren't much in the face of a couple of bricks. These bricks just walk in and boom! They're all, they're, all those PDs are dead. So Umbra needed a little bit more if he wanted to defend. Perhaps he should have sent some of his Harby production up this way so that he's coming in on all flanks and so that there's no escape for small raids like that. And we have more bricks coming out from Nyar in through the back. Now we have a wave of scouts coming in. Does Umbra know about that nuke? He does. He absolutely knows there's a nuke there. Has he clocked it? Has he registered it? I think he has because there's a big wave of Janus coming in. What are the Janus? What are the Janus planning to do? And there's a big wave of air defense to take out the counter air from Nyar. No, the Janus is going for the air grid, and if Nyar loses his air grid, that will utterly put paid to any hopes he has of rebuilding like this. The HQ is here and could be a target, and the Janus open fire. A lot of them are dying to Flak and Sam's, but the damage is getting through. Boom! Pigeons going up. Factories going up, but the HQ is alive and the air grid is still sort of there. So that could have been a lot worse for Nyar. This is how it could be worse for Nyar. He has these Harbies pushing in on his original base, and that's a lot of Harbies. And sure, there's a lot of point defense, but it doesn't feel like enough. Look at it. This is just this is just being torn apart by these Harbies. That is brutal. And point defense is the order of the day for Nyar, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. And as if that weren't enough, there's a monkey coming through the water backed up by a bunch of bricks into St. Tizel base. What is Nyar's answer to this? And Umbra has started... A, he started a nuke, but I don't think he's actually clocked as a, a nuke already built by Nyar. He hasn't got any nuke defense. How's that nuke coming along? Well, it's half loaded. Will the other half be able to load in time? The monkey comes out into the old base of saints, and that's just going to be torn apart in a matter of seconds. There's a few Percy's in here, and Percy's are the best T3 counter to monkeys. But only that many with this many bricks and support? That's not enough of a counter. And rather than push in here right away, there's a lot of T3 production here for Nyar, so Umbra's just going to come in here and clear it up. And the situation is looking bad for Nyar. Is his only hope the nuke, which is nearly loaded to be fair. But he's losing a lot of his eco here, and does he have enough to load the nuke fast enough and produce the things he needs to produce? Well, is his answer going to be telemaser? Certainly it's going to involve the laser. But that's taking a long time to build. Saint's asking, is the com here? I bet he's pinging around there somewhere. Yeah, he's saying, is the com, is, it, is the com here? Is it here? He's planning a place for... And the nukes loaded. Does Nya realise? Because if he fires it, that could be what he needs to win the game. Or at least... It could be what he needs to change the course of the game. A defensive nuke right here would be amazing. He's got a decent army here, and this army is trickling in without the monkey. He needs to wait for the monkey. Actually, I say that, but it looks like that Umbra is just going to shred it. Huge line of PD. And the laser is going to finish. And the nuke launches. It's going, it's going for Umbra. Umbra makes a dodge. And Nyar also goes for the telemaser to catch the dodging comb, but is he going to finish it in time? In come all of these Harbies. In comes the monkey. That telly's not going to finish before these guys arrive, is it? 
He, it isn't. Nyar cancels it, and the army rushes in. His laser opened fire on the Harveys, but we have to watch the nuke. A massive Janus snipe for Nyar's com. The nuke hits, boom, and Umbra is taken out in the explosion, and Nyar's going to win the game as his com explodes. But Nyar and therefore Code Team win the game, despite the fact that the last Code Team com was going up in nuclear fire as the win notification came in. What an insanely close finish. Normally, I ask you, what could the other guys have done to win? But they were doing it. There was just a fraction of a second in it. So instead, tell me about your closest games. Maybe even send them into cast. So tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.